Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial from skymotion.com uh, Today what I thought I'd do is I'd just uh, introduce you to uh, Poser Pro 2012 This is the uh, animation tool that I use for creating uh, some of the animation on skymotion.com um, But I thought what would be useful for a lot of uh, beginners uh, that are starting animation that are using um, Poser is just to show you around this tool and um, show you some of the, uh, the the ways that I, the workflow that, that I use uh, when animating. I'm just going to run through some of the key features um, for animating as well as you know just how I set up um, my computer so that I can uh, use it efficiently. So here what you'll see is I've got my main um, viewport. Uh, this is uh, at the moment you can see here over in the top corner we're in the main cam. If I want to switch um, I can just right mouse click and then I can go to camera view and I can quickly just change the view. If I want to zoom out, there's this little um, cross uh, of fingers, <laughs> hands up here, um, and that will allow me to zoom out and pan. Um, and then this one here allows me to um, dolly and, and, uh, and track and move the camera around in all axes but this one here allows me to zoom in and out or to um, track the uh, camera in and out um, and then what else do we have here this little ball here um, this is so that you can orbit around if I I can't do that in, in back because that's an orth orthographic uh, view but if I go into main or into auxiliary I can rotate around my character just by selecting um, this little ball up here okay so that's kind of cool now in Poser Pro um, we have these uh, shadows um, and you can turn these on or off um, by going into the light control and then selecting each of these lights over here you'll see that I have um, this is called my parameters tab um, there's two little tabs that are um, in this uh, this menu here I've got my parameters and I've got my properties if I just go into properties and if I just turn off shadow for that light and then just systematically go through each of those and I might just move that one and we've still got one more shadow I can turn off the shadows like that um, over here we've got our document style. Now document style by default it comes in a textured shading but let's say that you wanted to have it set at cartoon or something like that. You can change the way that you view um, your document. Now you can also do that at the moment this is a set for cartoon I'm just going to turn it back to shading but if you want to do let's say that I uh, imported a, a ball and I'll just move him over here I could just make that element uh, cartoon shaded and I could go into display and then element style and then turn that into cartoon and now just the ball is cartoon shaded but everything else on the scene will be uh, normal shaded or normal textured until I actually go back in and I could say document style and I could make say everything silhouette and that one there probably I'll have to put that back there we go cool okay I'm just going to turn this back to textured texture shading and I'll just get rid of that sphere by selecting it and hitting delete and just say okay all right, so we've got a number of um, menus, um, the windows open here. We have uh, this one here. Um, this is called our animation palette, and you can find that by um, going into the windows and then selecting animation palette. If let's say that we hide animation palette, another way of bringing it up is down here. If I select this key and hit that key, that will also bring up my animation palette. This is a fantastic tool for animators. This is the one that you will need to, to use. And also you'll need to use this one here, which is called your graph. You can dock and undock these windows in Poser Pro by simply 
bringing it to a position and then waiting for it to highlight in blue and then release and it will dock it in uh, in that position um, and you can do that with all of these so if you have um, two monitors it's often a good idea just to place them on another add on another monitor and have your uh, view your viewport as large as you can possibly make it but for this video um, I've got all of my menus in the single uh, screen here so that we can capture but normally I would have this um, set on two two monitors okay so by default we've got our little guy here um, if you wanted to uh, bring in another rig if you wanted to get rid of him you simply select him and then you would hit delete you just and then he disappears um, and over here you can see I've got my my library and the library is the thing which has all of our characters in it and our, our, our props and I'm just going to load in a box okay and I'll zoom in on this little guy alright now let's say that I wanted to change the background color I could do that by coming into background color and then just selecting a color going OK um, by default we have a floor the floor will normally come up um, when you load it in Poser uh, you can go into guides and you can turn that off if you like and now we just have our little queue by itself so I'm just going to show you how we set a key in Poser. Um, to set a key it's really very simple um, all you have to do is um, in time you move in time and then we could use the parameter dials over here uh, to reposition our little character and now what you see is we've actually um, set a key. Now what is a key? A key is normally um, it's a representation of an explicit transition. So we have three or four different types of uh, transitions. Actually, we have we have quite a few. Um, but the main ones here are we can either move, translate. You'll see over here in the um, parameters tab we have our translates, we have our rotates, and we have our scales. So translate just means that in this case our little guy here he's moving from side to side. Now notice. Um, down in the uh, the graph editor here, how that key represents where he this little guy has been positioned in X. Now X is side to side in Poser. Y is up and down, and Z is backwards and forwards. Okay, and every time you manipulate this little guy it will save a value and then if you have a look at it over time we'll see that our little box here moves from frame 1 all the way through to frame 10 like that now if we come over here into the animation palette and we find that little cube the little box here it is here you'll see that we have a key at frame 1 and a key at frame 10 and we can adjust or edit that key either through the uh, the graph editor here by just simply selecting that little knot we call these knots um, on this curve here and or we could position that knot later in time if we wanted okay so that's just our translation um, let's say that we wanted to rotate it. To rotate it, let's say that he's going to start spinning like that. He spins, say, 360 degrees. I could type that value in as well. And now, if you have a look, you can see that we've also created another knot or another key at frame 25, and it rotates 360 degrees. Um, and so if we play this animation from the first frame all the way to... 25 you'll see that we now have our, our animation now to select or edit the animation in this curve editor one of the best ways of doing it is just simply to select the channels um, on the parameters tab here so these are all of our different channels for that object and if we wanted to edit say the X trans then we would 
simply select that slider and we could then manipulate or edit the values in the curve in, in the graph editor there. Another way of doing it is there's a little drop down tab here and you can see all of the different uh, transitions that are available um, or the channels for this one object uh, in this drop down menu. So if I wanted to I could just say okay now let's just go and affect say the Y and I could either position it later in time or I could alter the height of that that little guy there as well. Now that's the graph editor. If I was to do the same thing over here it's very difficult for me to be able to adjust um, the uh, position um, in the animation palette but what the animation palette does allow me to do is it allows me to do a very broad adjustments as far as timing goes. What that means is we can see that at frame 25 over here I have some animation but let's say that I just want that animation to happen earlier in time you'll see that I've got box 1 which is highlighted red and I'm going to select that and I'm just going to move that key all the way over a little bit earlier in time now what that's done is that selected all of my animation that is on that box because I've selected everything in that box if I was to open up this uh, this little um, arrow over here you'll see that what it's done is it shows me all the channels that are available for animation on that box. I've got all my scales, all my rotates and all my translates as well very similar to what we have up here. Um, I could individually manipulate each one of these let's say that I wanted the rotate to happen earlier or if I wanted to I could delete, uh, sorry I could close that uh, box and then I could come back to this first frame of uh, the last frame here and I could manipulate that last frame and what it's doing is everything that has been keyed on that one frame um, it's going to move the timing of it okay so this is very good for you know very broad um, timing uh, changes but for specific um, value editing you really should do it in the graph editor or if you wanted to you can manipulate it here and also if you wanted to you can manipulate let's just see if I go into the X channel you can select your object and you can manipulate it in the viewport and there you'll see on the graph editor it's changing the value or the position in space relative to that frame on that object. So there we go, we've learned a little bit about how to set some uh, animated keys um, in the dope sheet and in the, uh, the graph editor. Um, I hope you found that useful. Um, I'll continue with some of these tutorials but this was just a very uh, quick simple demonstration on how to use the animation features in Poser Pro and uh, next we'll do some animation exercises um, and learn some more about the key fundamentals of animating in Poser. Thanks very much and uh, we'll talk to you soon.